the DJI Mini 2 has to be one of the most affordable beginner drones out there, especially with the latest release of the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Now, if you're in the market for a Mini 2 or you just bought yours and now you're wondering, what do I do now? Well, this video is for you. Today, I will walk through a quick basic beginner's guide on how to set yourself up for a great first flight. Let's get started. It was just a year ago last summer when I started flying drones for the first time with my six-year-old, well, now six-year-old son, James. And the kit we had was the DJI Mini 2 Fly More combo. So what you see here is more than what you would get in a basic Mini 2 package. In the Mini 2 Fly More combo, you get the RCN1 controller, the drone, three batteries with a charging hub, which is brilliant, an 18 watt charger, USB-C cable, three sets of replacement blades with their screws, a screwdriver, two joystick replacements, and a carrying bag. Now, if you get the basic kit, you're down to one battery, one set of replacement blades, and no bag. Now the first thing you're going to want to do once you have the drone unpackaged is to charge your batteries. And the way that you charge the battery is going to be directly inside the drone. Now the Mini 2 is unique. It has a flap or a door on the back. You'll flip that open and then you'll take your battery, which when it comes to the box is already gonna be installed and you'll see that. You'll take your battery and you'll line up these contact points with the receiving end of the contact points here on the battery. So you just slide that in, make sure you push it in place. It does a little bit of a snap and then you close the lid and also make sure that has a snapping sound like that. And then you're going to take your USB-C cable, you're going to plug that into the back of your drone and then you're going to plug the USB-C or USB into the wall jack and charge your battery. Now the flight time for the battery on the drone is rated at 34 minutes. I will tell you real world, real life, I'm lucky to get 21, 23 minutes roughly out of that battery, depending on how aggressive I'm flying or not aggressive, which I will tell you I'm mostly, I'm mostly normal speed to uh, sport mode, which is the fastest speed that you can get out of the drone. Now when it comes to the RCN1 controller, you're going to charge that with a USB-C cable directly into the bottom and into a wall jack as well, or charging block or brick, some people call it. And you're going to get roughly six hours out of a full charge on the RCN1 controller. Before you turn everything on, I recommend you do a once over of your drone. Now in order to unfold this drone, you have to do the top legs first, or arms actually. Unfold those out like that. And then the bottom arms can come out like this. Now when I say a once over, you're just looking for loose parts, anything that seems like it's totally out of place. And obviously if you've never flown drones before, a video like this is going to be very helpful. So the first thing I like to do is go around to each of the screws and make sure that they're just snug. And then you're going to take the gimbal cover off. And when it comes to the camera, you just want to make sure that there's nothing holding the camera from moving freely. It should be able to move like this and the camera itself should be able to rotate up and down. It's going to have its pitch or tilt. So look around the drone, make sure there's nothing cracked. Check your blades. That's a, that's a good recommendation. If there's any hairline fractures or there's any peeling, of the uh, blade at all, you definitely want to address that, especially if it's brand new with DJI. Um, you can see here, I've got a chip out of this blade. I haven't flown the drone in a while, but I should technically replace that blade. Now you're ready to turn everything on. The first will be the drone. Now, whenever firing up the drone, you always want to make sure the gimbal cover is removed because when you turn that drone on, the gimbal is gonna to wanna to go through its initial setup. You're gonna put your thumb in here, your fingers on the front, and you're just simply gonna pull up and forward, and that cover comes right off. Now, in order to fire up the drone, you're going to press once, and then press and hold a second time. There it is, you'll hear the sound effect. The drone is now booting up. 
Go ahead and set it down, let it get, get its orientation. The second thing you're going to turn on is your RCN1 controller. Now, if you already have your tablet or your phone plugged in and unlocked, when you turn this on, it's going to automatically launch your DJI Fly app, once you've got everything set up, of course. So again, you're go going to press once and then press a second time and hold. It'll fire up the remote. And I already felt the vibration, which means the app is fired up. Now, it totally skips and goes straight to let's go and fly. So let's go back to the main screen. The main screen shows the Mini 2 is connected to this remote and the Fly app and that it's ready to go fly because it says go fly at the bottom right. Now what you're going to do is register your drone. Now in order to register everything, you have to create a um, account with DJI with just a simple email address and then register your drone. Now it will marry both the drone and the remote together. And the next thing would be to update your firmware. If you receive an alert to update firmware, it is important that you do this right away. For safety, you always want to keep your firmware up to date. Now let's check for any error messages and their codes. In order to do that, you go to the main flight screen, which will be the go, you'll want to tap on go fly. So on the bottom right, you tap on go fly. And now you're in your main flight screen. Now there is a section here before taking off called the pre-flight check. And that is located at the top here. On the left, it says it has a as an arrow that takes you back to the main screen. And then there's what is you can see says C mode. That is cinematic or cine mode. That's the speed that you're set at currently for the drone. And then there's this message here. It says account no longer. Now this could be any vari any variant of messages. It doesn't matter. Just tap on that. And when you tap on that, you will get your error codes and their messages in your pre-flight check section. Now, if you're getting error, any error messages having to do with uh, cannot connect to GPS, that means location is bad. If you're getting anything that says um, about the mechanics of the drone that it cannot take off due to gimbal obstruction or gimbal malfunction or various other things, then you want to address those one at a time before you actually do your first flight. Now, just before you take that first flight, you'll want to do the hover test or what I like to call the hover test. You're simply going to take your drone outside to a fairly hard and fairly flat surface. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it definitely needs to be in an open area with no obstructions right up next to it and definitely over the top. Nine times out of 10, if I get into a bind, it's because I didn't look up and I didn't see that electrical wire or that tree branch. So this is just an initial test that will tell you if the drone is in good condition or not. So we're all set outside for the hover test with the Mini 2. First things first, we're going to take the gimbal cover off. Just like I always recommend, before you turn it on the drone, you have to take that gimbal cover off or else it won't be able to do its full orientation and adjustments that it needs to go through. So again, you put the thumb underneath here and your fingers on the front, pinch and pull. Now to turn the drone on, you just press once and then press and hold a second time. And the drone is on, put that down. Now we turn the remote on and because we already got the drone on, we got our phone unlocked, it will automatically launch the DJI Fly app. There we go. And now we can take a look at our uh, pre-flight checklist. We haven't taken off yet. Again, that's at the top of the screen. Right now, my screen says takeoff permitted. We'll tap that. Everything looks normal at the very top. Go ahead and exit out of that. Now we're going to launch the drone or take off. And the way that you do that is on the left-hand side, you've got the circle with the arrow up. You tap that once. And then where it says take off, tap with your finger and hold. And the green circle will complete. Let off and the drone will take off. Everything looks good so far. Sounds good. So now what we want to do is we want to go back to that area where it says the pre-flight checklist. Now that we've taken off, so at the top of the screen you're going to tap. Now it says gimbal motor overloaded land aircraft and check whether the gimbal can rotate freely on all three axes. See, 
it's very important to check before you take off for your flight. So now that you know that you need to check your gimbal, you tap outside to exit back to the main flight screen. And in order to land the drone, you're going to go back to the left-hand side of the screen here. Now there's a circle with the arrow pointing down. Tap on that once, and then where it says land, you're going to tap and hold till the circle completes green. Let off, and the drone will land itself. And there we go. Now, you may be thinking, it's time to take my first flight. Well, hold on to that thought for one second. Whether you're taking your first flight as a drone pilot or the first flight with this drone that you just purchased, I believe a pre-flight checklist is a good idea before, you take, before taking off. I've put together another video where I go over my pre-flight checklist that has saved me a lot of time and potential head eggs when crashing your drone. You can watch this video by clicking or tapping here.